The scene is set here at Stadium Australia for this historic State of Origin encounter between New South Wales and Queensland. To bring us all the action, the Nine Network commentary team, headed by the voice of Rugby League, Ray Warren. Thank you, Ken, and welcome as we witness another chapter in the history of State of Origin unfolding before our cameras and, of course, before these very, very brave fans. Sydney has been deluged since about 3 o'clock this afternoon, but the fans have flocked here to Stadium Australia, hosting, of course, its first Origin match, a capacity of 110,000 people, tested on the opening weekend of the NRL, but I doubt that it's going to be tested tonight. Having said that, it is a tremendous crowd, nevertheless, probably in the area of 85 towards 90,000 people. As you can see, the crowd shots that the Channel 9 cameras are bringing you, and, of course, taking these pictures right across to the United Kingdom through Sky Sports to Papua New Guinea. But it is still a great atmosphere. The stadium that will host, play main host to the Olympics in the year 2000. Let's have a look at that New South Wales side again. Here's Peter Sterling with it. This is the side looking to keep the series alive, Ray. Robbie Ross at fullback, McDougall and Matt Guy are on the wings, Ryan Girdler and Terry Hill the centre pairing. Laurie Daly is at 5'8", he loves being there. Andrew Johns at halfback. Brad Fittler is the lock forward and the captain. Kosef Fletcher, the second rowers. Rodney Howe, Jeff Tuvey and Mark Carroll make up the front three. And off the interchange bench, Rickardson, Vella, Kennedy and Mundine, coach Wayne Pearce. Two of those players, of course, are up debut players, Vela and Kennedy. Here's the Queensland side with Paul Vorton. Yeah, the team looking to win the series tonight. Robbo Davis fullback, Matt Rogers and Wendell Saylor on the wings, Matty Singh and Darren Smith in the centres. Kevin Walters, well done Kevy, captains Queensland tonight. Paul Green at halfback, Jason Smith locked forward. Chris McKenna, Gordon Tallis in the back row with Craig Greenhill, Jason Hetherington and Shane Webke in the front row positions. The interchange of Benny Eichen, Stephen Price, Tony Carroll and Martin Lang, coached by former Queenslander Mark Murray. So Stadium Australia and uh, a crowd of, as I said, I imagine around about 85,000, but almost impossible to forecast. The Maroon dressing room, of course, they hold the, the balance of power at 1-0 in the series. And, of course, I suppose it comes down to will Queensland shut the series down tonight or will New South Wales survive? Well, history and statistics are against the Blues. They've gone into eight game two matches, 1-0 down, and on one occasion they've gone on to win the series. So it's not a happy place to be, 1-0 down in this best of three. So the Blues are up against it in that department, but st stats mean nothing to them at the moment. Go, go out and do the best and win the game. And that's exactly what Queensland are doing now. They're going out to a reception tonight from the New South Wales crowd, which is probably no different to what the Blues experience when they go to Suncorp Stadium. The crowd waits for them. The Queenslanders leave the dressing rooms with only one on debut, and that, of course, is Paul Green. So here they are, led out by Kevin Walters, his first time at the head of the Queensland side. A very proud moment for the 31-year-old. In fact, the oldest player in the Maroon side is Kevin Walters. And as I said, it's something that he will never forget. He's been a great ornament, a great uh, rugby league exponent and ambassador for Queensland. And, of course, for Kevin Walters witnessed the ups and downs of life in the last couple of years. He's got some great players around him. Matt Singh, for instance, playing in the centres. Gives them tremendous fabric out there in the three quarters as the Blues now with the, their new look side. They take the field. Five of them. Five new faces to the side that was fielded at uh, Suncorp just a fortnight ago. And the new faces of Carroll and Tuvi. Uh, together with McDougall, bring with them 18 Origin games. So 18 matches of experience amongst those three players. And of course, I haven't included the two debutants, but Vella and Kennedy on the bench. And there they are. They're out there with Brad Fittler at the head of proceedings, captaining the Blues for the eighth time. His record reads three victories and four losses. And the Blues going to the left of the stadium, heading off towards the northern end of the Stadium Australia here tonight. Brad Fittler, the young captain youngest ever in fact uh, to play for Australia Brad Pitt. and an enormous job in front of him tonight but he'll be quite comforted by the fact that he will be packing into the back of the scrum that's your job that's been given to you and Laurie will be out in number six Steve Roach is down there in this driving drenching rain good evening to you oh who cares how good this this is unbelievable atmosphere there's a few more people than when I spoke a little bit earlier I've got to tell you, I'm a little bit worried about the uh, the Queensland go forward. Lang, Webke and Tallis must be contained by the New South Welshman if they are to go on and win this, but their backs are against the wall. They really need to win this one. 
15 degrees, a light nor'easterly. New South Wales have won the toss and are running left to right. Go you Blues. So we go to the national anthem now to be performed by Chelsea Gibb, who's currently uh, wowing the audiences in the Sydney production of the smash hit musical Chicago. Here is Chelsea Gibb. Again, starting of course at the moment in Chicago. Rain just absolutely pelting down. It's going to make conditions uncomfortable for these players out there. Let's hope they can give us a good spectacle. And of course, it's under the guidance of referee Stephen Clark, who's in his first Origin match uh, tonight. It was because of his appointment that Wayne Pearce declared that he would run with the team given to him by selectors. In fact, Stephen Clark represents the 15th referee who have conducted uh, a state of origin match starting 20 years ago back in 1980 they've played 20 times in sydney and that has worked out at 10 all so this is match 21 in sydney for the harvey norman state of origin game two 1999 as i said earlier oh spud carroll coming back for the first time two years down the track in rep football with a big run and now his front row partner rodney howe Tallis there to meet him with Webke as we come away from the 20 metre line. This is Fletcher put down on his own 20. So it's Johns now going wide, finding Daly. They immediately try and get round and Girdler. Girdler's making a great run. Support coming on his inside. Robbie Ross is away. Robbie Ross is going to make it. Robbie Ross is over. New South Wales are in. First set of six. An amazing start for the Blues. They have gone right around Queensland and a sensational try. Girdler breaking into space off a daily special. And then it was Robbie Ross, I feel, who's come in wide in the back line. Yeah, it was, put this one down for Wayne Pearce. It was just a great set move. They sent some decoys through. The cutout pass travelled 20 or 30 metres. Ryan Girdler's first touch in the run on side. He runs 40 metres. And Robbie Ross, he's a great support player. He's got 15 tries in the season proper. He gets the first tonight. Lovely little offload there from Laurie Daly onto Ryan Girdler. He split Darren Smith and Matt Rogers. And 42 seconds into this match, the New South Wales team take the lead. Yeah, well done, Wayne Pearce. He's, he's watched tapes. He's spotted a weakness out there early in their defensive pattern in the tackle count. And uh, Robbie uh, Ross finishes off a fantastic try. I've never seen anything like it. it. It might even be the quickest origin try. It would have to be. Absolutely brilliant stuff from New South Wales. And the timing of the pass from Girdle back on the inside of Ross is very important. Everything was done perfectly. 
He had the wrist behind him a little bit, Robbie Ross, but when Ryan Girdler got away, I think he could have thrown the ball to either McDougal or to the try scorer, Robbie Ross, and it would have been the same result. It's a planned move, it's worked to perfection, and Craig Greenhill, well, that's insult to injury, isn't it? Blood bin in the opening minute. Well, dreams do come true, but I would imagine that Wayne Pearce and the New South Welshman have been dreaming of that since uh, Suncorp Stadium a fortnight ago, and Girdler converts a try that he took a big part in. 6-0 New South Wales after two minutes. And Steve Roach on the sideline. Sit down, take it in again. No, oh, you've got to put it down to the element of surprise. They wouldn't expect New South Wales to throw the football out to the left hand side early. They'd expect them to bash it up for the first set and settle in. They didn't do that. Robbie Ross, what a great support player he is, and what a start for the Blues. So we do it all again. The try coming officially 42 seconds into the game, and Carroll reenacts the start of play. Come on, put on the same move, make it 12. How does the save? And that's where I think Greenhill probably got wounded in the, the first time round on take one. Now Cossett, and he will play the ball just inside their own 40 metre line, New South Wales, with two feet. A dummy half and a penalty to the blue. Stephen Clark penalising in the play the ball to Queenslanders. And so Andrew Johns will come over and find the line. There's the man that got uh, pinched in the penalty, and it was Chris McKenna. The only run-on player that hasn't played international football for Queensland. Rodney Howe again now. Driving the wedge. They're playing on the right side. They're playing on the western side of the stadium, and Scott Carroll makes a mistake, takes a shoulder charge. Queensland get the advantage. Sailor the player. Made a mistake and got absolutely hammered. Matt Singh picked up and driven down by a strong number seven. Here's the hit on Spud Carroll. He just couldn't take control of it. And then Shane Webke put a shoulder onto him. Now it's Walters working inside the 40-metre line, putting in a deep kick that's going down towards the New South Wales goal line, bringing it back the try scorer Robbie Ross. Quite a strong representation again from the Melbourne Storm. Jeff Tuvey, oh, he passed with his back on the uh, defence. It could have been right under the uprights for Queensland. Played, and away it comes after McDougall had played the ball, and Tuvey decided to take a settler. They play over towards the eastern side of the ground as it goes through to a second receiver, and Fletcher able to stand and offload. Cross it to Johns, Johns away. Then taken by Terry Hill, and Hill has put down just on his own side of halfway. Terry Hill and Gordon Tallis having a bit of a dust up as they go in field. Fitler and Johns combining before finding Girdler. Darren Smith comes out of the deep and puts him away and the scuffle continues to be broken up by Laurie Daly. Johns puts a kick in, Sailor goes back to help his fullback Robbie O'Davis. It is O'Davis who comes beyond the 20 metre line, his own end of the park. And both teams have shown their intentions very early. New South Wales quite prepared to throw the Sign. football wide as the Maroons get their first penalty. Another play the ball infringement. While Queensland have shown they want to play field position. We saw Kevin Walters kick long and deep early in their tackle count. Fortunately, this little scuffle between Hill and Tallis, it didn't escalate. Penalty was against, again, one of the New South Welshmen in the play the ball, Martin Lang, who's been, of course, in the spotlight of rugby league discussion since his match at Marathon Stadium the other day. Now, Webke pulled down by Carroll. Carroll lined him up like target practice. Hetherington to the right, green short ball. McKenna comes off the right foot. Daly puts him away. Carroll coming over the top, and I think he probably hurt Daly more than he did the ball carrier. Now they've gone through to Walters, and Walters puts a kick in, heading down into the bottom corner, and it'll be urgent from McDougall. Out of who? Beautiful work down there on the bottom corner from Rogers and McDougall, and that cameraman who's absolutely <laughs> been poleaxed in uh, in performing his task. And it's been taken out by New South Wales, so it'll be a, a goal line dropout. Good tactics from Kevin Walters early in tackle count twice now he's kicked with some strong kick chase that time from Rogers it'll be unsettling for the Blues so Johns giving the ball back to Queensland he kept it low and it's coming back via Martin Lang Lang taken by the shoulder of Fletcher but more importantly by an orthodox daily tackle 
Hetherington left and Webke takes it up and then Howe is there with Fletcher. Got it away, Hetherington for Walters. Walters is with the ball after um, it was handled there by the halfback Paul Green. They're 20 metres out centre of the ground to the right they go. And again from Green, it's gone to Jason Smith. Now Gordon Teller stepping from one, tackled on the 10 metre line. And there's the high shot showing them come back to the left of the ground for Jason Smith, beating one taken in a second. Right in front of the sticks, there they are. Pictures coming from the uh, the Goodyear blimp tonight. The aerials, across it goes now. McKenna, McKenna's put down oh, nine metres from the line. Now, from seeing it's gone to green, green. A grubby kick and a chance, but Ross is there. Perfectly stationed. So, been a big start for Robbie Ross. He's had his critics, but he's certainly coming through Origin 2 as strong as he did in Origin 1. And that was a very important set of six for New South Wales. After their great start, they couldn't allow their line to be crossed so early in the game as Brad Fittler takes the ball over the 20. The defensive effort of Laurie Daly in the opening seven or eight minutes here has been quite superb. He leads the tackling. And they've been great tackles as well. Plenty of venom as Andrew Johns. Kick centre field. And you would have noticed that Mark Carroll is off. He's gone to his first rest period, and young Michael Vella from Parramatta, the boom prop forward, is on the paddock at the moment. Ball to be played by Matt Rogers, the scorer of all those points for Queensland. He's not well, Rogers. He got up very gingerly as his other winger, Sailor, takes it ahead, and there's a limping Matt Rogers retiring to the uh, extremities of the park as Webke is thumped to the ground right on the halfway line. 6-0, an amazing start for the Blues. They were over to put the ball down 42 seconds into the game. It was converted. Ross, the try scorer, Girdland was the kicker. Now, a little kick by Robbie O, picked up by Robbie Ross, and he's able to swerve away from him, the defender, before Saylor brings him down. Andrew Johns then, away for Matt Dyer. And he reminds me that we are well off for goal kickers in this New South Wales side. People like Girdler, Johns, Geyer, as the ball goes away, Crosshair feeds it on, then it's away to McDougall. McDougall tries to weave a passage under the Queenslanders. He's tackled just beyond the 30. Vela is on, as I said, for Carroll. And here is Vela now. Just inside his own half of play from Tuvi. He's giving good service, Tuvi. Johns is getting the ball exactly when he wants it. And so are the forward runners. Now it's back with O'Davis off his own line. Out 10 metres met by Hill. Uh, defending on the right side of defence and Daly is working overtime in defence. He's having a great game and the quality of the match has been sensational considering the weather we've got. And Jeff Turvey, he'll, he'll make a huge difference tonight to the Blues. Not only with his crisp passing to dummy half, but as the forwards get tied, you'll see him run a lot more as well. Played there by Lang and Hedrington offloads and Price it is that takes it just outside the Queensland 40 metre line. They lead 1-0 in the series. They can wrap the series up here tonight. As Rogers puts in a kick, he seems to be okay. He's free in his action, and the ball goes over the touchline for a scrum to restart play back 10 metres from the New South Wales line. Well, you've got to pay credit to both teams so far. As Paul mentioned, the control of the football in the opening period of this game has been wonderful. You get the, the feeling, though, that the first team that come up with a mistake are going to be heavily criticised from their own teammates. They'll be uh, given a mistake. Adrian Lamb be a little bit disappointed sitting on the sideline, wishing it could be out there more than anything else. Wouldn't be enjoying watching the scoreboard at the moment. His teammates, well, there are six points behind. The game's a long way from over. But, gee, it's been an impressive start by the Blues. Special comments, of course, from Wally Lewis, who joins us at Origin Time. We've got Andrew Eddinghausen, Alan Langer, Steve Roach, and, of course, the regulars are in the box tonight. Tuvi now back on his own 20-metre line, and that's a zero tackle for them as it comes away with Kosef now. The, the manly back rower is brought down just beyond the 30. They go to the left and they use a wide blindside with Howe and an offload after a hit and spin back for Girdler. Girdler is on the 40 metre line now. Pictures going through Sky Sports in the United Kingdom. We welcome you people as New South Wales get a penalty. Sky New Zealand, TV3 New Zealand, and MTV in Papua New Guinea. Welcome to you all as Daly continues his fine game in State of Origin 2, his last in Sydney, he's giving it away, rep football, so this is farewell for Laurie Daly in the sky blue in front of a Sydney audience. Fletcher now will play, 30 metres out, right in the centre of the park, 6-0, Tuvi putting something together. Rodney Howe running at Matt Singh, Singh puts him down. 
Blue set it up on the left of the ground. And it's with Johns and a dummy to Fiddler. They go over to Fletcher. The pass has gone backwards. Scooped up brilliantly by Johns. Daly puts a kick in over the head of Romeo. Oh, Davis puts it over the uh, dead ball line. It is a line drop out for uh, Yeah, they're really playing well, the Blues. A lot more second phase play tonight, especially players like Rodney Howe and Brian Fletcher offloading in tackles. Nick Kossop doing his job as well. Bit of luck there. And I just wondered, Laurie, he had some support. If he had another choice, I reckon he'd hang on to that one and, and not kick it. I'll tell you what I think he would have done, and that's thrown the long pass to McDougal, who had a bit of space on the outside. Would have been tough to stop. This, the wave comes again. Fire offloads to Carroll. Takes it inside 40. Straight through the tackle of Price. Centre of the ground. They're 30 away from the Queensland line. Vellanar. Go forward that they're expecting from the trio of Vela and Howe and Carroll is most important to the New South Wales uh, overall plan. Gerber takes a hard hit. Price in the headgear. Talis gives him a pat on the run. As Fittler works off to the left of the ground to the 20 metre line. Fittler put down by a three man Maroons tackle. Tuvi works back to acting half and takes Daly with him down the blind side. Daly quick hands catch and pass, but it's gone forward and out. Gee, they set that up quickly. Oh, that's what Tuvi can do to you. He saw some space down there, saw that they were short on numbers, the Queenslanders. He's done this plenty of times for the Blues in the past. And Laurie just, uh, well, you'd have to say, maybe they should have been deep with those outside backs. Good luck, McDougall. That was another chance, wasn't it? I, I've always thought that in the past there's been a little bit of a problem in, in fitting Andrew Johns, Brad Fittler and Laurie Daly into the same side because they are first receivers. You want them to play selfishly because they are such great players. Tonight, the gel is very good. They're all getting a lot of use of the football and a lot of times they're in the first receiver to dictate terms. Tony Carroll playing it for Queensland and there's a penalty going to the Maroons. Clark early in the game enforcing a very strict ruling on the play of the balls and at the moment keeping a very strict ruling on the 10. Green it is, the North Queenslander, looking for touch. I don't know that he's going to find it. Oh, acrobatic stuff by the Blues. And it's Geyer away from a couple. Sailor's got him. That was quite fantastic. Who was it? Robbie Ross, I think. It was Robbie Ross and Queensland. They wanted to play on. And the referee, Stephen Clark, he said the tackle was complete, then he lost it, and that's the reason that we see this one pull back. So this was the kick. He jumped from the field of play and batted it back to a support in the shape of Matt Geyer. Then the tackle was completed before he lost it. Thus, no advantage. But they have got the advantage of the loose head and feed, and now the first play. This is the second. Singh. Trying to go through the markers. Daly's blocking the middle up fantastically well. Fletcher involved. Now coming down the blind is Price. And Price is taken by Vela and Hill. And they're very close to the line, as you can see. In that northeastern corner, Hetherington long ball. Green equal to it. Then a short ball from Walters for Carroll lurking out wide. 12 away, centre of the park to the right again for Jason Smith. He puts a little kick in, McDougal marks it, it'll come back to the 20. McDougal had his, had his peepers right on Jason Smith as he probes and schemes. Look, he is a great player, Jason Smith, but I've got to say that his kicking game at times does let them down. I think his results are probably less than 50%, and with other kickers, I don't think that, that Jason, that's Jason Smith's role, to be quite honest. Steve Roach is soaking up the rain and the atmosphere on the sideline. Yes, big fella. Yeah, I've got to say, Tuvi's the difference so far. What he does is keep the markers on us. They've got to worry about whether he's going to run or not. And what it does is take the heat off uh, Rodney Howe and also Mark Carroll. Greenhill's getting stitched up at the moment. He'll be back out in a sec. Johns is with it. Rebke came across, but Ross is with it now. Oh, good tackle. Carroll driving with the legs. Now Tuvi goes back looking for the kick from Fittler. Fittler puts it down, straight down the throat of Wendell Saylor. Well taken by the Australian winger. And he runs into Hill. They're having a good contest there. Geyer and Fletcher all involved in the defence. They're inside the 40-metre line. And O'Davis is with it, having to reach down and take it in. Then McKenna. And he's taken down by Fittler, who is troubled by that groin. He will see a specialist on Friday. And I'm led to believe we'll have the operation as early as next week. So, Sydney City, I doubt that Fittler would have it next week, though, with the origin coming up. But Sydney City are bound to be without him for a period. Rogers, 
Rogers down the right of the ground and pulled down again by that man, Robbie Ross. But Queensland on the attack now. Here's Jason Smith. Here's Paul Green. Green is held just inside the 10. And five tackles are gone. The Maroons looking for Jason Smith. And here he is losing his footing, but it's a penalty. Penalty going to Queensland. Now what to do, settle it down, take the two points, or keep on the attack. I think Kevin will settle it down, look for Matty Rogers to come in. He just made a sensational run, Matt Rogers. They will take the shot for goal. <laughs> Chris Close, the big fellow. Oh, it's a big rain oh, coat. <laughs> it's, it's a tent. Oh, it's two rain coats stuck together. Every drop of rain is coming down on Chris Close. He hasn't missed anything. But uh, Matt Rogers, a fantastic run. He beat four or five of them. He took a really top tackle from uh, Robbie Ross to save what was a certain try. He'd have gone all the way. And in the next ruck, Paul, Paul Green over in front of the posts. He had a lot of support on the outside. He took the tackle. That was a let off for New South Wales. And again, a strong blockbusting tackle from the 5'8". Laurie Daly, ladies and gentlemen, has made 11 tackles in this game and he leads his nearest New South Wales rival by three tackles. And that's a second rower called Mick Kosseff. This has been a superb farewell in front of a Sydney audience for Laurie Daly so far. And then there's another three tackles from Kosseff to the next defender as well. So both the 12 and 6 doing plenty. And Rogers, who continues to limp out there, chance to put Wilson on the board and should do so. So four from four at Suncorp, and now he's got one from one at Stadium Australia. We will break. We'll be back in a moment. As we say again, welcome to all our viewers overseas, uh, those through Sky Sports in uh, the United Kingdom and Sky New Zealand. You've been with us most of the year. TV3 New Zealand, MTV Papua New Guinea. I'm pleased to know that you're getting the telecast and we welcome that rugby league, rugby league loving country up there. And back at Stadium Australia with a 6-2 scoreline in favour of the Blues. Back live, you didn't miss anything. And it's Greenhill who's been bandaged, who's with the ball, back on his own 20-metre line for Webke to take the second play. He has taken it upon himself to be the Paul Harrigan in the Queensland side when it comes to Mark Carroll. McKenna now, I thought the pass might have been a fraction forward from the dummy half. Eichen is on in 14 doing that job. Webke taking it up for a second time on this set. And they're getting near the end of this set as a matter of fact as Greenhill takes his second run. Webke and Greenhill taking two each on this run. Uh, down the ground that sees Green kicking. And we're coming up to the 20th minute of the game with New South Wales leading 6-2 and a good chase by the Maroons. And it's Robbie Ross who plays the ball and McDougall folds in to take a run, the run of a forward, which the wingers are expected to do more and more often in the modern game. Did he lose the ball getting up? It went unnoticed, I fancy. It might uh, well have been played legally. It's Hill who plays it now. And it back for Tuvig and Tuvi for Vela. And Vela puts the shoulder to the wheel and then he's met by... Greenhill, and they put him down, him and Eichen. Tuvi now losing the cap. Carroll not getting enough steam up, is hit by another another Carroll. Uh, just at the moment, the oomph has gone out of the attack from New South Wales as Andrew Johns chips and finds a bit of space and leading the race again. Robbie Ross puts it on the toe. Good chance for New South Wales. Queensland are backpedalling, but Rogers is back there. You might have expected Matt Rogers or Matt Singh to be back there. And certainly one of them was. Now Wendell Saylor, Peter. Excellent vision there from Andrew Johns, but the forward hit-ups before that weren't that convincing. In fact, I've got to say that in the last five minutes, Queensland have come back into their own in that department. This will be a good test now. They're under some pressure. For the likes of Talis and Webke, they're doing the job. Here's Talis taking it over the 20-metre oh! line. Fourth tackle is the call from Stephen Clark in his first hour. Jamecha McKenna makes a mistake. And can they capitalise on it? Vela is the man with the ball. And put down by Singh over the top of Kevin Walters. But they have got great field position. They're 25 away from the line. John's for Daly. Daly for Robbie Ross and he puts it down. It'll be a scrum. And then Queensland can relax just for a moment. Well, pressure let off, that's for sure. But uh, the disturbing side on the New South Wales bench is the pass from Daly. I think a little bit of confusion. Robbie Ross not knowing which gap to run into. But on the sideline, Mark Carroll 
reeling away from the last tackle he took. That's twice in the last 10 minutes that he's been on the sideline. I still don't think he's recovered from that initial blow he took in the opening minutes. I've noticed that Kennedy and Rickardson are getting ready to give uh, New South Wales some fresh legs. And there is the New South Wales bench. Ben Kennedy coming on for his first taste of uh, origin football. Robbie O'Davis it is with the ball, playing it inside his own 40-metre line. Martin Lang puts on a sprint, but he's met by the defence. Fletcher working hard there with Brad Fittler on that occasion. Down the blind side for Greenhill. And he only had Sailor on his left. And that was the total of the support on that run. Now a kick from Green going down and uh, plugging before reaching the sideline. Ten metres away from the Blues line, the Wizard Blues. A tackle ten metres out from their line and the sting has gone out of it. It has a bit. No one's worked harder harder out there tonight than the uh, New South Wales fullback, Robbie Ross. He's doing a bit of the stress himself at the moment, doing it very hard. Rodney Howe, that's a good charge. Michael Vella and, of course, these fresh reviews. They need to pull their fingers out now. Is Rickardson to be there spinning around and coming down, losing the ball? And the New South Wales put a boot to it. Then John's got it away. Kennedy was almost into space on his first touch of the football. Five gone. There'll be some conjecture over the ruling back there, but I think he got it right. It's with O'Davis now as he comes away beyond his own 20. He's taken down by Luke Rickardson. Here's what happened back down the ground. And it's lost by Tuvi. I thought he lost it forward. Then it came off Queensland. And looking at it now, I do think he should have put a scrum down. From the hands of Tuvi, I'm, I'm sure the ball went forward. Now it's Lang. He will play the ball on his own 40-metre line as Walters lines it up. Oh, oh, Greenhill! Hit hard by Rodney Howe. Well, it's no surprise to see Rodney Howe do that, but the play before Ryan Gerda, he came in and threw himself at Martin Lang. Kennedy on for Fletcher as the ball goes to the right and Walters not frightened to kick. In fact, it's been a feature of the game. It's going down to keep Robbie Ross working and he's had plenty of that to do and it's sort of coming through in the zest that is missing from his running now some 25 minutes into the game. Guy. Peter was talking about Ryan Girdler and a tackle that he made. I was talking about Rodney Howe. This was Girdler just earlier on. Big hit there on Lang. 30 metres away from their own line. It's with Tuvi now. And Rodney Howe had it lost and got it back in. But both he and Carroll are coming off a short run-up and they're losing a lot of momentum when they reach the defence line. Ross worming his way along the ground and down the blind for the kick from Johns. He kicks it straight down in the direction of Robbie O'Davis. Not a good kick. It didn't put any pressure at all on the Maroons. And O'Davis on tackle one is back. Well, he was back 35 metres out from his own line. Yeah, Jeff Tuvey gets a well-earned break and Anthony Mundine comes into the match for the first time after 24 minutes. They don't lose anything in the dummy half running there. He'll slot into that role very comfortably as Martin Lang takes the dummy from Hetherington who does very well. In fact, he's done better than well. He's done outstandingly to pick up 30 metres. Well, they're just outside the New South Wales 40-metre line with the New South Wales defence dropping off. Kevin Welders, a beautiful ball. Jason Smith, support is coming, but he gets it away on the right and Rogers goes in Rogers has scored for Queensland I thought Jason was going to pass and left to his other Darren but he went to the right and Matt Rogers has gone in to get another Queensland try and in fact he's got all the points in the Origin Series so far yeah just a shortage of numbers as we freeze it there you can see that Ryan Girdler has come in for the intercept and straight away just the one New South Wales defender out wide as play continues I think they probably throw one extra pass in here that's not needed that was the dummy Robbie Ross really came up with nothing there I think the passer of the football would have scored in Jason Smith but he made a bird of it by putting it out wide to Matt Rogers, Kevin Walters did very well, attracted two defenders also. Yeah, great ball from Kevy, held them up on the inside, then there was plenty of space out there, and he had to get it out wide, and Girdler made a mistake, the defensive error made by him. I've got to say, New South Wales hit a wall about five minutes ago, and they are really struggling at this stage in both attack and defence. And Jason Smith loves to run the ball down the right-hand side of the field. He's out there now, he's looking around for support, Maybe could have gone himself. Robbie Ross should have done better there, no doubt about it. Round the legs, down goes Jason. But Rogers in the corner. Yeah, I circled Ryan Girdler coming in for the intercept. In that situation, he's better off backing off. 
the overlap was just about to be established and he could have nullified that to some degree if he'd have stayed out of play. Well, Matt Rogers was denied an origin try in Brisbane a fortnight ago, but he's got it tonight. Now from 21 out, five metres in from touch. What a great kick. That's a terrific conversion of his own try. Queenslander in front by two. Doubting the never say die attitude of the Maroons. Just when you think you might have the ascendancy, they turn it around. Doesn't matter whether it's coming up to half time or full time. The record book shows that they consistently do it. So after leading six points to nil, 40, well, two minutes into the game, a try after 42 seconds. New South Wales are down 8-6 as we welcome you back to Stadium Australia. Along with a crowd of probably in the area of 80-odd thousand. Rain soaked night in Sydney town, but we're getting tremendous entertainment from these two sides. I think that's probably gone unnoticed by most of us that the handling has been absolutely superb. I mean, we've had some interruptions, no question about it. But it's just amazing that they can even pick the ball up and hang on to it, given the velocity of the tackle. Ross playing it now, Mundine passing, and here's McDougal, and he's tackled 32 metres away from the Blues line. There is no doubt the momentum has gone from their running as Kennedy has put down there. They're just inside their own 40 metre line, and here's Howe trying to lift them, driving the wedge down towards halfway. Ray, I think an important point for the game now is going to be for the ball carrier. Every time they run the football, of course, we saw that last try that was scored by Queensland. A sailor brings the ball back to around about five metres from halfway. Three dummies were thrown. They were always taken by New South Wales. Of course, the first one that was thrown was the best one from Jason Hetherington. He's the man that got them into the right spot. Smith threw another one. Both were taken. Comments from Wally Lewis tonight. In State of Origin 2, the Harvey Norman State of Origin 2. As Robbie O'Davis plays the ball on the halfway line, Kevin Walters for Gordon Tallis, and Tallis is heading for the ground. Put down over the top there by Fletcher, and John's underneath. He's very strong, Joey John's the number seven. And Greenhill, he's put down on tackle number five now. The rain increasing and driving down as Walters puts a kick in. A relieved captain now that the scoreboard shows in his advantage. Robbie Ross had to pick it up and then he dived for cover. And he's lost Now the... he's lost the ball. This will be interesting. Well, I just think it's a New South Wales mistake, Ray. Right? just lost the ball. Okay. That's exactly right. They just lost the ball. It was an absolutely perfect kick. It forced the fullback to play at it. He's got no room to move in. And the chasers were either going to put him over the sideline or back into the in-goal area. As it's turned out, the ball just pops out. Queensland will get the scrum feed in no more attacking position than what they do here, nine metres out. Rodney Howe to the blood bin with ten minutes to go to the break. A break that New South Wales will be looking forward to. And now Robbie Ross in from the back and throws a dummy, takes the defence, no support in an onside position eventually. And Matt Singh, it is a dummy half, goes for a scamper. Queensland aware that they've got New South Wales on the back foot now. Daly again, defending down the blind side on the right of the ground. Sailor Walters. Walters running off that right foot, he steps inside. And Ben Eichen, I think, will come on for Matt Rogers very shortly. He is really struggling, the winger. So it's with Green and then back on the inside for Carroll. A competent performance from Green, but you'd expect that from the little number seven. Henrington for the line! Pulled up and forced back on five. O'Davis wide, green, a kick to the air, and a test for McDougal again. Rogers! Rogers is up above the pack, but he's lost it. And it's coming back to the 20 metre point for the restart. Well, I think he's lost it because he's just not fit. He's playing on dead set one pin out there at the moment. He couldn't get up high enough. Well, he did get up high enough, actually, but uh, McDougal was there. And I think the injury has really taken its toll on him, Matty Rogers. Icons on now. Rogers leaves the field on the far side. Carroll started with uh, tremendous gusto, but he fancied that he took a hit early on. It certainly took plenty of the wind out of his sails. Johns took a little cuff across the chin from Kevin Boulders. The referee said shoulder high, nothing to report. 
Now Hill goes down the right of the ground, tries to stand up Matt Singh, but not too many people do that on tackle number five. Mundine left, Johns kicks, and down she goes, over the head of Robbie O'Davis. Oh, he's had an air swing at it. Comes away with it, and the referee is going to put a scrum down. A chance here for the Blues. Actually saying that Robbie O'Davis propelled the ball back to the other goal line. Tell you what, I would be doing now that Matt Rogers is not out there. Benny Eichen's on the wing. I'd be putting there it is there, and well, it's a tough call on Robbie. It O'Davis. is a hard one. I think it went back. I'd be putting Matty Singh out in the wing, where he's played a lot of football. It's a very hard defensive position out in the wing. Benny Eichen's never played there before. So here's the Blues with Daly driving it to the far corner, looking to unload and put down. Defence solid, ten metres away from the line. Now it's with Kossev. Kossev taken to ground on the second tackle. Eichen is on the right wing. Will they put a blindside play on down that side? Tuvi comes the other way. Fiddler! Fiddler looks to get it away. It's loose on the ground, picked up by Terry Hill. Put away by Sale. No gain in ground. Still, there they are. Close proximity to the line. Johns using a running Michael Vell. Vella now playing it. That would be four. As Tuvi goes away to Johns. Johns on for Fletcher. Fletcher inside for Daly. Daly back at end again to Johns. Johns away. Intercepted. No. Sailor couldn't get a catch on it. Six more tackles. Geyer is with it and tackled. Eight metres away from the Queensland line. Tuvi there. Stephen Clark remembers to nullify the tackle count. Tuvi, you can see the uprights. They're in front of him, three metres away. John, dummies to one side, goes the other. Michael Veller is with it, and he's taken to ground. Time consuming, letting Queensland set up their defence. Daly punches it! Daly's over, that is a try. Laurie Daly scores a representative try on farewell in front of the Sydney crowd. 10-8, the Blues over Queensland with six of the first half to go. And there is dead set no player out there who deserves this try more than Laurie Daly. It's almost like Wayne Pearce has said, you're only playing half a game, do your best. Well, he's taken an inside pass there. It was the second set of six in a row. Wendell Saylor had given them another set of six after missing the intercept. And Daly, he just... Took the ball at speed, burst through, 17 tackles already next to his name. Now he's got to try as well. One thing in this game is you can't beat class. Some of the greats have had it, Sterling Lewis, and this man is up there with the best of This isn't a, a time in the game where you just needed someone to run straight and hard. Very slippery conditions, very hard to defend in that area when there's an angle change. Laurie Daly knew that, called for the inside ball, and over he went. And that shot there, it was a perfect example how somebody not taking maybe half a metre or a metre towards the play proved all the difference. Tony Carroll, he was just a little bit slow out. See the 16? He just takes a step one too late. If he'd have gone across a touch earlier, the gap wouldn't have been there. It would have been closed up. And just that small lack of effort has cost his team possibly six. Not Good far luck. out from half-time, sorry. No conversion easy now no kick at goal easy good from a similar position to where he converted the robbie ross try and he's got this one haven't we got some magnificent goal kickers 12-8 new south wales blocker after 35. well the change of angle especially in the wet is the best play especially if you've got speed like Murray daly he put pressure on himself today saying that he would have a blinder tonight and isn't he rewarding us with one what a game he's having wally it, it, it really was required wasn't it? it was just what new south wales needed well, they needed a big man to put his hand up. Daly did that. He knew that they needed a little bit of direction. We've been saying that they had lost a little bit of uh, their point of attack. They'd slowed down a little bit. And the master put his hand up. Knew exactly right. Robbie Ross, obviously, uh, Robbie Ross is a guy that uh, has been leading them forward all night. But his opponent, Robbie O'Davis, is probably feeling a little bit of a disappointment. I think his teammates can probably say, well, bad luck. We didn't think it was all that bad. But the man that counts, he did. Carol now tackled on I think the second play as it goes to Kossev and he goes up the middle and runs into a maroon shoulder Carroll was there with Webke Tuvi is back on Mundine stays on Fittler tries to beat them with that left foot step Tuvi at acting half a long ball John's kicking off his 20 meter line and it's going out on the full so a great opportunity just in front of half time for the Queensland Maroon and that kick was the end of a very poor set of six from New South Wales they struggled to get the ball 25 metres out from the restart. And Queensland, here they come again. Shane Rebke attracts three defenders, but still takes it 21 out. 
right in the middle of the park. Played back for Hetherington, and they use Stephen Price to take the second play. And a little window opening for Queensland to rest the lead back as Green puts a short ball on the chest of Tallis, and Tallis takes a buffeting from Daly and John. Third play, 12 metres away from the Blues line, in the hands of Paul Green. Then Jason Smith, the destroyer, and he's put down seven metres out on four. Now Carroll's a dummy half, Walters is open side, that's him. And along the line for Price, and Price goes to ground, that should be five, and it is. There's the uprights, that's where they are. With the kick coming, he's going to go for a drop goal, I think, no. He puts a little grubber in, and New South Wales clean it up. Well, Kevy, I thought for a moment, was going for the drop goal. I'm not sure why, but that's the, that's the impression I got. You lunatic, what's 12-9? <laughs> Well, anyway, he's... apart from that, it was a good kick, but uh, needed to get into the end goal. The, now those tactics really come into it, the grubber, because they're very hard to handle when the ball's on the ground. Well, was there a knock on there from the New South Wales player? If A. Davis knocked on, I thought maybe that's got to be close to one as well. This is Kosseth now. Tuvi away for Johns. Price is chasing, daily kicking. And the ball going down to bounce up for O'Davis off his 30 metre line. He's outside the 40, pulled down by Fletcher and Johns. So Johns has made a good contribution on the chase. Sailor now. And he's met there by Crosshead and Carroll and pulled down on the halfway line. So it's Robbie O'Davis then, a dummy half. And across for Green and then on for Walters. And Walters on for Darren Smith. Girdle has got him this time. And the play is about five or six metres into the New South Wales side of play. With the scoreboard showing a 12-8 advantage to the Blues. Two tries, one to Robbie, uh, Robbie Ross, the other to Laurie Day. The Maroons there, just in front of half-time. About two and a quarter minutes to go, and the ball has travelled forward. You described Paul Green's game as confident. That's probably the way it is, Raps, tonight. Um, personally, I'd like to see him, well, I don't know about the pass. Stephen Clark was 10 metres away, called it forward. I'd like to see him run a bit more. We know he can run the football. He's very... Uh, He's got a good step on him, very smart around the rucks, and he likes to take on the big men and duck under them. Johns feeding what will probably be the last scrum before the break, and they go quickly across to Mundine, playing out in the centres outside there. And he plays the ball 35 metres away from his own line. They look to go down the blind. Girdler threw a dummy, and they almost bought it, but Eichen was there to shut it down with Darren Smith over on the right side of play for Queensland. Now Johns and a torpedo ball, finding Daly. And Daly is put down without any hesitation by McKenna and by Green. And now it's Johns again for Fletcher, getting the ball right on the head line. Good dummy half play, though, Jimmy. And they're just in the Queensland territory as the timepiece comes down to a minute and a quarter as Terry Hill tries to make a break. Set up that try for New South Wales at uh, Suncorp a fortnight ago. This is the last tackle. Johns cutting out Koss F wide. Daly cuts out Kennedy. Then Girdler. McDougal comes back in. McDougal's on the 30-metre line. Gets a ball for Johns. Johns, the ball might have been touched, was it? Fittler couldn't pick it up anyway. And referee Clark will put a turnover together. And Queensland it is receiving it on their own 30-metre line with Wendell Sale. I thought Queensland were a little bit lucky to get out of jail there, Rabs. I thought that ball was definitely touched in flight. I don't see why it would have gone backwards without it. Heathering to the man. Queensland a little bit lucky. Now they've just got to make sure no errors come up. They're certain to attack, though. Jason Smith it is. Why? The ball to ground, and Queensland losing it backwards, cleaning it up. They're on their own 40-metre line, but both these teams now looking relatively slow by comparison with the start and that's very very understandable considering the conditions but they have given us a marvelous spectacle really as Walters puts this kick in both the winger and fullback were up very shallow and Gaia goes back takes the ball into ground into the uh, in goal with him and there's the siren and the whistle from referee Stephen Clark so at half time we've got a scoreline of 12-8 the Blues over Queensland two tries to one that is the halftime score Laurie Daly having an exceptional game as is Kevin Walters the other number six we will take a break and be back with Ken and Peter with the highlights from the first half of Origin 2 in just a moment welcome back live to Stadium Australia the nine coverage the national nine network covering the second state of origin the Harvey Norman state of origin here 
in front of a tremendous crowd in atrocious conditions. We're in the New South Wales dressing room at the moment. They are leading by 12 points to eight and switching the cameras across to Queensland. And uh, there's no fuss and bother that you can see from there, and that's what you would expect from State of Origin coaches like Pierce and Mark Murray, even though they are in their first year. Let's have a look at some hit-ups and tackles from that first half. There's the forwards work rate. Yes, Jeff Tuvey having a, a fantastic game. We're in that dummy half area with 14 tackles. Brian Fletcher, we haven't seen him run the ball much, but 13 tackles tells us that he's, a, he's out there doing his best. And Rodney Howe, a great hit-up rate to him with uh, 10 hit-ups. One man whose name isn't there is Laurie Daly with 19 tackles. Well done by Laurie Daly. Jason Hetherington having another big game, made a huge bust uh, midway through that first half with 16 tackles, doing well. And Smith, McKenna and Webke all doing well around the ruck. The crowd waiting now for the return of the players for the second half and just looking around the panel of commentators. Peter, there was a, a period uh, halfway through the first half when New South Wales started to lose it. The momentum went out of the legs uh, and by comparison, Queensland were looking to be getting on top. Yeah, I just wonder what a telling blow that Laurie Daly tried just before half time to improve in this game, Ray. I've got no doubt that the first 15 minutes, New South Wales absolutely superb. Then Queensland got the ascendancy and the lead. And then Laurie Daly getting over late in that first half. He's just lifted his side. As I said with Ken Sutcliffe, I'm sure that Wayne Pearce is stressing to his players that look, if you go out there with a big defensive effort and don't let the opponents cross our line, we won't get beaten. And that's exactly what I want to see from you. Magnificent arena this. I mean, this is certainly going to be looked at by the crowds around the world next year, and they'll be looking at something very, very special. It is our newest, it's our biggest, it's our best, and it's handling tonight very, very well. The playing surface looks ideal as the Queenslanders make their way back out. Kevin Walters having his first captaincy of Queensland is also having a very big game. Down by four. They were down by six after two minutes. And uh, then they clawed back to lead 8-6. And now trail 12-8. It was a tough call, I thought, on Queensland. The, the catch that O'Davis failed to make. Robbie jogs back onto the park, but I still think it went backwards. And because they put a scrum down, New South Wales were able to mount the attack, and it was from that that, that Daly was over the screen. And Paul, it will be very interesting to get the half-time report to find out what, if any, involvement we're going to see from Matt Rogers in this second half, because he's already proven to be a match winner once, and uh, has got a try as well next to his name, name this evening. Well, even see tonight, he scored the try, he's kicked the goal from the sideline, he's, he's scored all of Queensland's, uh, what, 17 points in State of Origin this, this year, in this series, so, uh, yes, and as I said, in defence, uh, the wing is very hard to defend on, and personally, I'd have Matt Singh out in the wing and Eichen back in the centres, but we'll have to wait and see. New South Wales, they're back out. They know if they can sort of play the way they did in that first half, maintain that lead, they go to Lane Park in a couple of weeks looking for a 2-1 series win. It's unknown just what uh, this man is going through to put himself on the park, Brad Fittler, but uh, the news is tonight that uh, the groin will be examined on Friday. There will be an operation before season's end. So, as I said earlier, Sydney City are going to have to do without this superstar of a footballer. And then, of course, I would imagine that happens as the operation would happen after all. It's just unknown what uh, he's having to endure, though, to make it through in origin football at the moment. Stephen Clark, he's done well. He's got a scoreboard of 12-8 in front of him. Nobody's complaining too much, although, as I said, if there was a blemish, it was the call on O'Davis that led to the daily try. Webke brings it back, first tackle of the second half. 12-8 New South Wales. Carroll making the tackle with Tuvi. No surprise Carroll involved in a tackle on Webke. They've sorted each other out very much, uh, very much so during the first 40 minutes. The start of the second half then. Third play, and it's Hetherington, who's brought down about 30 metres out from his own line. Playing it back for Kevin Walters. A dummy half he finds himself, and using Webke, taking it out again for the second time on a set of six. He's certainly putting his hand up. Uh, Shane Webke, the kick now coming from Paul Green. A charge down attempt from Rodney Howe. And then Green gets a kick in, and it's going down deep into New South Wales territory. It's a good kick, really, from Paul Green. And Robbie Ross brings it back now. And both sides will need to watch their 10 metres here. I'm sure Stephen Clark will again be laying the law down early in this second stanza. Keep the teams apart. I wouldn't be surprised to see an early penalty. 
A minute of the second half gone as New South Wales get their first use of the football in the second stanza. And it's Rodney Howe to the 40 metre line. Now for Mark Carroll, a surge to the halfway. And then Stephen Roach in a moment. He'll be joined by Andrew Whittinghausen and Alan Langer as New South Wales get a penalty. And again, he's penalising the defence, uh, the would-be markers, for being too slow in rising. And he's been very strict in this area tonight, Stephen Clark. And the arm has gone in both directions on a, an equal amount of times. The penalties are 3-3 as the Blues get an opportunity early in the second half. With 2v unloading, Carroll coming down the ground, down the centre of the ground to Hetherington. And together with Talis, they put him down, again with 2v unloading. This time it's John to wave for Daly. Daly looks back inside, picks up Robbie Ross, and then back for Fletcher. And Fletcher losing the greasy ball. Geyer goes through with the ball on the boot, and the referee will pack a scrum and he will give the loose head and feed to Cook. Just inside the 20 metre line. In front of the Queensland posts, Fletcher unable to take it. Ross coming in from the back, and then Fletcher losing it with the impact of the tackle. Tuvi has now been sent to the blood bin with some blood coming down from the top of the right ear, so it appears. Steve Roach is uh, with us now on the sideline and he's got with him Andrew and Alan. Yes, Steve? Yeah, uh, Andrew, what did Wayne Pearce say at halftime? He would have been pretty happy, I suppose. Yeah, he was pretty happy. He thought that uh, Queensland are making too many easy yards up the ruck and he wants them to jam right in the New South Wales side. And he said force them to go around you. Slippery conditions and they'll probably head over the sideline. He also said that the deep kicking game uh, is what, it, what it's going to take to win this match. They've been playing uh, too much down in their own territory. They need a deep kick. And when they do get down there, get that ball in the air. He wants to see them bombing Sailor. And now they've got a new replacement out on the field. Matty Rogers has gone off. And now the Blues are attacking. So uh, he said they're looking good. So we'll come back to the sideline in just a moment. There is an attacking raid on for the Blues with Nick Kossef. 10 metres away, centre of the ground, Mundine for Johns, Johns, a long pass for Daly, Daly inside ball, Fletcher, Fletcher back to Robbie Ross, and Ross is so close again. Playing it back for Mundine, and then Daly, Daly, holds it back, Carroll, Carroll barging for the line, pulled down two metres away. Mundine again, a dummy half, he can't go left, he goes back to the right, and it is Kossef. Just flopping the ball up there for Fletcher. Fletcher looking to get rid of it. Gets out of a tackle and has pulled down eight metres away from the Queensland line. Played back for Robbie Ross. Now with Andrew Johns. Johns puts on a sprint and Johns is tackled again. One metre from the line on five. From Robbie Ross, a dummy half. Daly puts in a little kick. Beautifully taken by Ben Lakin. That will be a line drop out to restart. Oh, sustained pressure for, there from the Blues, but what wonderful tackling from Queensland, especially from Shane Webke and Jason Smith coming across to deny Robbie Ross a try. That was Benny Eichen trying to get out of dummy half too quickly. Girdler swoops, good attack and tremendous defence. They looked like they were through five times, didn't they, there? New South Wales, Johns, Daly all looked like they were going to score. So that great uh, Queensland spirit held them out. Can they do it again? Oh, it's a, an ordinary drop kick from Paul Green. It's a very ordinary drop kick, and it was beautifully taken by Kossef. That was a mongrel of a ball to pick up, but he did it very capably. They set up another opportunity with Rodney Howe on play number two, taking it towards the centre. They're 15 metres out from the line. Johns is with the ball. Long, long pass. Out with Daly. Daly goes out for Robbie Ross. He tries to step and beat them, but he's pulled down well by Matt Singh. Now it's Terry Hill heading off towards that bottom corner, and he's pulled down about three metres out. That would be tackle four, and it's Geyer a dummy half. Back into the hands of Daly. Daly for John. John's leaves the 20 metres behind him. Fittler goes back over towards the right of the ground, and that is five tackles gone for the Blues. Tuvi now looking to get it away. John's is with it. Puts a grubbing kick in, and again Ben Eichen is there to pick it up and to take it to ground safely for Queensland. So let's go back and complete that halftime summary. Yes, Stephen. Yeah, just one more quick one to ET. Did Wayne Pearce mention the flat spot after such a good uh, start from the New South Wales? Yeah, he said the boys did start well, but unfortunately they did fall into a flat spot. They can't afford to do that in this second 40. And the boys have started on fire, so I think, uh, you know, they've definitely taken that to heart. All right, mate, thanks very much for your time. Uh, we've got Alfie down here, Mark Murray. What did he say at halftime? I suppose he would have been happy with the, with the comeback after the first couple of minutes. Yes, he was, mate. He was very happy with the effort, but... Uh, the main things he wanted the boys to concentrate on was dummy half running, uh, especially in these conditions, uh, to cut, the, cut down the uh, big fellas, their defence, and also 
when we're kicking, especially putting the ball in goal. It's, uh, we've been letting the New South Wales off too much pressure down their own half. OK, mate, one more one. Jason Smith was outstanding in the first half. He touched the football. Can he be the game-breaker for Queensland? Well, I think he's got to be the game-breaker. If he's uh, touching the ball and uh, handling the ball a lot more than he has in the first half, I think Queensland will come up with the victory. Alfie, get your little body out of the weather. It back to you, Ray. Thank you, uh, Alan Langer, Andrew Eddinghausen, Steve Roach, three of the origin greats on the sideline. Webke away, Walters did well, turned his back on the defence, Smith gives it inside for Tallis, and Tallis is tackled 35 metres away from the Blues line. Here they come again, the Maroons, Jason Smith is met there by Ryan Girdler and held with Brad Fiddler, and he will play the ball just beyond the Blues' 20 metre line. Darren Smith at acting half, and it's gone for Paul Green. Across the ground, left for Walters. On for O'Davis, in from the back. He runs away from Matt Singh. He runs away from Terry Hill. He gets the ball for Wendell Saylor. Saylor is put down. And they're 15 away from the line. Play back again for Singh. And it's with Walters. And he cuts out Greenhill. Finds Green. Green away for Jason Smith. Throws the dummy. Tries to beat them. They've got the ball wedged against the midriff. The ball goes to ground. What's he going to do? He gives six more tackles to Queensland. And Green played it. Smith bounces away from the defence. And Jason will play the ball. A metre from the line. A chance for Queensland to go back to the lead. Tallis hits the uprights and bounces back. And they're big numbers to the left, but unfortunately for Queensland, we've got a blood bin. bin. Darren Smith. And they're still short on the far side. If New South Wales don't number up on the right-hand side, they're inviting Queensland to score. Now, Spud uh, Carroll has also been told to go to the blood bin. So both Carroll and Darren Smith to the blood bin, and this interruption will not will not help Queensland in their endeavours to get the ball over the line. Well, Gordon tell us he's dead set nearly knocked the post down there. It's still shaking at the top up where the flag is. Unbelievable. Just wait, just wait. I like about his commentary. He can read something into the game. Things that other people can't see. No. <laughs> it is Tallis who will play the ball. Adjacent to the upright that is still wobbling from impact. Green back for McKenna. And McKenna is put away. Eight metres out now. But that little break in play has probably helped the Blues. Greenville. He's put down on five. Hetherington. Looking for his playmaker. Finding Green. Green puts a grubber in. And McDougall is back there. And... The half was beating a double pace, but they will get it back. And Adrian Lamb riding every inch of the way with his uh, Queensland Maroon. I think any sort of kick into the in goal area at this stage of the match, high, low, in between, doesn't matter. It's still going to be very hard to handle. Not a bad drop kick. In fact, in these conditions, a pearl of the kick as um, Lang comes back to be tackled on the 30 metre line. They, they were good yards by Lang. And now it is with Greenhill. He will play the ball in the centre of the ground. Running towards the southern end of the park is Queensland, trailing by four. Green works with Tallis this time, and Tallis has got his arms free. And then takes the tackle, is pulled down by the number 15, Michael Vella. But they're putting on pressure again. Now they attack the 20-metre line, and McKenna is put down. In fact, they're inside the 20. They're down on the 10. And the aerial's coming from the Goodyear blip tonight as it comes away for Tallis. Off the feet of a New South Wales player. Fiddler's into the space. They're going to run him down. He'll get to the halfway line and then pull down about five metres into Queensland's territory. But now Queensland trying to regather. Girdler, Kosef, Kosef, Johns. Johns cut out. Daly with it. Over the 40. Pass back inside for Terry Hill. He can unload if he can see a support. But he takes it to ground. Tuvi now. A little scurry away from Dummy Half. That takes them 25 metres out from the line. Robbie Ross goes into Dummy Half. There's the aerial picture. As Kossett or Fletcher runs it to the 10 metre line. He will play the ball now. They're right in the centre of the park. They set it up on both sides. Johns goes back. Vela runs to the right. Vela stands. Offers the ball. Then it's with Fittler. Fittler gets it away. It went forward. And the ball to ground, he'll put a scrum down, and it'll be a Queensland loose head and feed. Well, we saw Gordon Tallis try a shock tack at the tactic at the far end of the field, a little grubber through, and a touch of fortune for New South Wales coming up with the football through Brad Fittler. Unfortunately, six rucks later, pretty good tackle there from Chris McKenna, forced a mistake from the same man. End-to-end -end stuff. 
Pete, I think you've got to pay a lot of credit to the New South Wales defence. I think the kick that came from Tallis was more out of frustration than anything else. They had the Blues buckled over the line and they simply just couldn't get through. Let's check that injury with Matt uh, Rogers. It's 8-5 for handling errors, as you just saw, bottom of screen. Uh, Stephen, what's the story on Rogers? Yeah, it's a cruciate ligament damage. He will not be back. Ben Eichen will take over the goal kicking for the Queensland side. Martin Lang then, 42 metres away. There's Rogers back on the bench. Hetherington using a blindside raid. Jason Smith goes back in. Hetherington back for Green. Green swallowed by his opposite number, John. And players on the halfway line with the boot of Walters and uh, McDougall was up in the play. He was up very flat. Ross will wish it to go over, and it does. So it'll come back for the 20 metre tap to restart. Bit of silly, not much time on the field for Anthony Mundine tonight. Is that surprising to you? Very surprising. Tuvi's having a great game, and he's the kind of player who I think needs a lot of involvement, Jeff Tuvi. I think he relishes you know, the amount of game time that he gets in the middle of the ruck. But Anthony Mundine, look, he's, he's an impact player. I'm surprised maybe that Wayne Pierce hasn't used him more down in the 20 metre attacking zone. Here's New South Wales now trying to go wide and get round the Queenslanders. And it's Burnley who smashed into the turf 40 metres out from his own line. Robbie Ross, dummy half, Michael Vella is the first receiver and he takes the play. The forward play towards Hartley. As Tuvi moves in to dummy half and then with Fittler. Fittler puts that right foot to it. It's a big kick travelling over the head of Sailor. Sailor comes back and O'Davis is in front of him to take it away. Davis then met by Daly again. He's always first man up there. 19 tackles at half time for Daly. Sailor. And a complete break by Sailor. Sailor put down eventually a shoulder from Robbie Ross. And underneath making the tackle was Matt Guy, but a big contribution from Sailor. Now it's Matt Singh, tackled 45 metres out from his own line. Good clearing run by Sailor, wasn't it? Green, a short ball. Jason Smith gives it back to him. Paul did well. He juggled it, took it back in under pressure. And he plays it eventually five metres into New South Wales territory. Darren Smith using Tony Carroll. And Carroll is put down by Rodney Howe. Underneath the tackle of Luke Rickardson. Down the blind. Jason Smith puts a kick in. Uh, Robbie Ross scurries across. He's going to let it bounce. He'll be trapped in goal, I would think. Darren Smith is there, but he gets it away to Matt Geyer. Good play by Robbie Ross and Matt Geyer. They're 10 metres out from the line now. Well, they obviously know each other very well, both being from the Melbourne Storm. And it was good combination because there's no way none Robbie Ross would have got back in the field of play. Cool head. Geyer did well to get back and allow the pass to be thrown. And he picked up 12 metres on the outside of McKenna. This is a very important uh, set of six for New South Wales. They've been under some pressure and they're having trouble getting it out from inside their own 20. That was a fortuitous ball. It's gone from Tooby through Johns and gone through Hill. Gaia takes it in eventually, comes away from the sideline. Sailor's got him, so has Boulders. And they put him down about 32 metres away from his own line. We are in the 53rd minute of the game. The tackles are practically even. Only three the difference. 40 metre line now. And this is the last tackle, so they're inside the 40. Oh, knock on! A knock-on, was it from Tuvi? No, it went unchecked and it's with Johns now. Well, I don't know whether Jeff Tuvi touched it or whether it was just a, hitting the boot of the man who played it. Well, we'll go back and have a look at it. It certainly looked as though it was. Let's see. It's come off the boot. So my apologies to Stephen Clark and to Jeff Tuvi, but it certainly writes the record. And Smith goes away for Green, who runs across and then straightens. And is, he's lost the ball in a one-on-one -on -one situation, is it? Played there by Tuvi, so New South Wales are 30 metres out, 25 metres out now, 22 out as Johns prepares to play it. Fiddler looking around, looking for runners. Carroll takes it ahead and he's put down 15 from the Queensland line. Tuvi then, way to the right, picking up Fiddler. Fiddler back off the shoulder of Rickardson, Queensland ball. Yeah, Brad Fiddler had a little hole in his, on his outside, that's where he wanted Rickardson to run. Wickerton went back on the inside, uh, no option but to pass it to him. Now Matty Singh, this is good stuff in Queensland, good running from him. Queensland trailing 12-8 and uh, 14 minutes of the second half gone with Jason Smith under that New South Wales tackle. And you get a feeling that that's a 13-minute or 14-minute period where we should have seen some points added by New South Wales as Price juggles the football. They really had a lot of things going for them early in this second half, haven't got it over the line and Paul Green it's a pretty good kick away in between the fullback and the winger, and one of them is going to have plenty of work to do in one moment. 
Well, Wendell Saylor was the only one down there, and he's done a magnificent yeah. job. Look, we gave him a wrap a minute ago, Ross and, and Gaia, but on that occasion, they ambled back. They didn't get in a position to run the football out. It would have been much easier this time because there's only one chaser in Wendell Saylor. If Gaia had a sprinted and got back on the other side and allowed Ross to pick the football up, they could have got out of there. One player struggling is Andrew Johns. He's right under the sticks there. He's hobbling around on one leg. He looks like he's in a mile of trouble. Mundine now gets a chance. Johns to the bench. Just a reminder, immediately following the State of Origin, if you're watching around Australia and across the world, we've got the World Cup of Cricket with Australia in that important match against Zimbabwe. We'll take you to that at Lords with Ray Martin and Simon O'Donnell hosting. That will be live from Lords immediately following the football as this price it is brings it back to be tackled in the middle of the ground just inside the 30 meter line new south wales enter the park hetherington using greenhill and greenhill gets it to the 20 meter line four points to margin but one gets the impression that queensland are about to whittle it away green dummy jason smith goes out for Tallis. Tallis to the 10 meter line and he's put down there by mcdougall and plays it back for Eichen to go over for green and green then for stephen price and price a three-man tackle he had his arms free i thought he was going to get rid of the ball that's the fourth tackle now they're only five meters away they come back to the right of the ground uh, to the playmaker jason smith and he's picked up there by fitler and put down with the aid of rickardson and five tackles are now gone for the maroons darren smith finds himself an acting half they go across to ben eichen they go looking for wendell sailor's jump pressure on gaia gaia's got the ball and he comes back into the field of play well he had a surge of maroons coming down on him and he's come out with Lady Luck smiling on it. Unbelievable. As they now make some good metres through Jeff Tuvey. But when they all went up, you would have thought that Wendell Sider was favoured for this one. But they've all missed it. And they came down safely into the arms of Matt Guyer. As Andrew Johns, we're told, has damaged a right knee. So a big question mark on whether the number seven will be back for New South Wales. Vela. I'd like to be sure of winning the lottery as I am of seeing Andrew Johns back in this game, Ray. Tuvi then, a, a sloppy play the ball by Michael Vella. And it is Tuvi who's put down just inside his own 30-meter line for Daly to kick now. And he goes down between fullback and winger towards the right of the ground for Queensland. And it's Robbie O'Davis just um, ambling back before asking Ben Eichen to take it out and meet the shoulder of Mark Carroll. Now it's O'Davis, a run for himself, away from dummy half of 23 meters. A good run by the fullback. He'll be told to play the ball. In fact, there's the tackle being called now. The last, and it was Sailor. Well, that was four under the party. Sailor was put down and tackled on the 40 metre line. As um, it comes across now for Green, and Green goes in for Talis, and Talis is put down. He will play the ball, and it is with Walters now. Walters back on the inside for Talis, and Talis sprinting down. There's the fifth tackle now. That earlier call certainly wasn't anything like four or five. The ball rolled into the end goal. Robbie Russell! He has taken a calculated gamble. It's paid off for him. Oh, and Jabba the Hutt sits back down, Big Choppy. I'll tell you what, he did really well. He made the tackle before. He was, he was marker. He had to sprint back. He was hoping, hoping, hoping it went over the end goal line. It did with his assistance in the end. There's plenty of strugglers out there, let me tell you, for the Blues. Queensland just look a touch pressure at this stage. Hoping, hoping, hoping. So the line dropout is down to the Queenslanders, and they're going to be tackled back 25 metres out from the Blues line. There's plenty of spring in the step of the Maroons at the moment. Hetherington away, and a juggle by Webke before securing the ball. He will play it, Shane Webke they set up another attack and it's Walters scheming and probing and McKenna did McKenna obstruct that's what he's penalized for Tuvi is down on the ground there's another one down off to the right that McKenna has given obstruction to Walters and a penalty goes to the Blues well it's Anthony Mundine the player who was unable to get to the man carrying the football and that's what it a shepherd or an obstruction is stopping the defender getting to the man carrying the footy and that was a really well received oh. penalty oh where's carol again but down knocked back anyway 
Still Carroll, down. Carroll. Carroll cannot get up. He's down and taken the count as Vela runs into another raid of defence from Queensland. And uh, referee Stephen Clark calling a halt. And some attention is uh, sent across in the direction of Mark Carroll. This was the hit, the big fella. Now, was there anything illegal in it? As they come in, Hetherington got him with the point of the shoulder. Shoulder charge from Webke, nothing illegal that I can see. You reckon there's a cocktail bar? We will take a break, be back having another look at it in just a moment. 12-8 to the blue. Some concern for Mark Carroll as he's assisted from the park. I mean, it's not the first time that he's taken a heavy knock tonight. Paul is suggesting there may have been a cocked elbow, but I'm sure it was a shoulder. We welcome you back at the 59th minute with this lull in play as Mark Carroll is helped from the field. 12 8 the Blues. And it would appear that he's not coming back into the game tonight. That was really second. big tackling by the Queenslanders. By Hetherington and Webke. As the New South Wales now play it down on their own 40 metre line. Mundine going to the right for Johns. And Johns floats a kick down that bounces towards the 10 metre line. With O'Davis now bringing it back, coming down the western touch line. Met there by McDougall and uh, good Darren Smith for Ben Eichel. has to beat the forward. He was put down there by the lock. Fittler and the second row of Koshev. It's a way for Martin Lang. Lang runs into half. They go to ground together. Hutton cuts out Tallis. Finds his captain. He goes out to Singh. And Singh is out to the 40-meter line where he's met and pulled down by Daly and Hill. Walters then finding another running forward. Chris McKenna this time. And McKenna on the halfway line. Put down on tackle number five as Walters provides the ball across for Green. Green's kick turns Robbie Ross around and it's down just inside the 10-meter line. There he is leaving it behind him now and then a good tackle by Hefford. He's as clean as mustard, isn't he? Really covers a lot of territory, gets through a lot of defense. That was his tackle, secure there by Martin Lang. Mundine away for Rodney Howe, and Howe is tackled on his own 30 meter. 12-8 still, the second half scoreless as Terry Hill tries to promote for New South Wales. Mundine to the left of the ground, Cossett. He will play the ball almost on the halfway line. He's had a good game too, Nick Cossett. So has Jeff Turvey, but I really think that this man here, Mundine, could be the difference in this second half. Up against tired legs. Although this kick might go a touch too far. He is really going to be a danger. And even with two of you on the field, I'd be finding a slot for Mundine somewhere in the 13. So the tap, which is more or less the optional restart. We've been shown in the last couple of weeks that players have been game enough to chance the punt. It is an optional tap. And so Davis has pulled down. He's about 35 off his own line as Queensland get this use of the football and the sailor. Four points for Martin in favour of the Blues as Hedrington comes across the Walters to go deeper across the back line for Paul Green. Green causing some trouble for the big men to pull him down. Rickardson does that on the halfway line. Jason Smith across for Tony Carroll. Carroll runs at Mundine and takes that player in the defence inside the 40 metre line. Mundine hangs on as long as he can as Hedrington gets a pass away for Walters. It wasn't a good pass. It's now with Green. Now they've got some numbers down the right of the ground. Darren Smith, he puts a pass back on the inside. Came off the feet of New South Wales. Came down to Ben Eichen. He gets a pass away, and it's back with New South Wales now. So Stephen Clark will give the uh, the advantage to the Blues, and they will play it just outside their 10-metre line. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why Ben Eichen would have tried to throw that pass there. I think the referee would have been tempted to give six again after it came off Luke Rickardson's legs. Blues now, Bailey probing and Terry Hill taking it down to the 40 metre line. New South Wales have got a big back line out to the left of the ground. Rodney Howe, though, takes a forward run over the halfway. And he's put down.
just into Queensland's area from Robbie Ross to the right for Johns and Johns tries to bust them himself he's pulled down by a desperation tackle from Jason Hetherington Daly for Ross stand still football Ross with a little chip oh Lang had it and then Ross tried to pinch it off him oh Davis is away with it for Queensland to be tackled uh, exciting football isn't it despite the wet conditions it, that was a case of who wants it it was like a hot spot as they tossed it around. Oh, Davis looks like he's in some, uh, some trouble. A nice little chip kick from Ross. Not high enough. Lang had it, lost it. Ross had it, lost it. Smith had it, passed it. And then Kevin in one of three passes. Well, there's problems here for Robbie Ross at 12 8 and the 63rd minute. This is how it happened. It is the right ankle. So there's a big, big problem here for Robbie O'Davis. So we will take a break and be back with you with the outcome of that injury to Robbie in just a moment. It's 12-8 in the origin number two at the 63rd minute. Davis and for a moment there might have been a break. Now I'm starting to think that it might be it might be better news. As we welcome you back wherever you're watching, uh, it's New South Wales by four, and the centre of attention is Robbie Ross, who's now on the medicab and being taken from the field. We thought maybe there was a break. Robbie O. Davis, I should say, but um, just looking at him, it doesn't appear that way. The news is probably uh, quite good. In fact, when you think about a snapped ankle, that it could well have been. Talking of injuries, what's the story on Mark Carroll, Steve Roach? Yeah, he's still keen to go back out there. The doctor is still doubting whether he will send him out there. But look, New South Wales needs some fresh legs. Ben Kennedy's just come on, and I saw him on the sideline. He looks as fresh as a daisy. He can bust tackles. They need him out there. Here's Lang taking it up for Queensland. He's brought down 10 metres short of halfway. Hetherington across now for Webke. Webke running at Rickardson and two. They pull him down. Play right on the halfway line as Hetherington just lays it on the stomach there of Green before it goes to Walters. And Walters will play the ball back to Hetherington. They come back on the right of the ground. And it's Green who puts in a, a low trajectory punt that's taken by McDougall back on his 20 metre line. He gets under and he goes through. And he steps on his left foot. He goes back to the centre of the ground. Looking to link up with Robbie Ross and he'll play the ball. Ross and acting to the right, they keep going. Johns it is, inside the 40 metre line. And Hill is able to bump away from Carroll's tackle, but now he's down and forced to play at 35 metres out from the Queensland line. Daly there for Johns and Johns for Rickardson. Luke Rickardson, he will play the ball. Right in the centre of the ground. 12-8 the Blues, no addition to half-time. Johns, the pass left behind by Kennedy, picked up by Daly. And the referee ruling play on. As, uh, I think he signified four tackles gone. It's with Fittler now. Back and across behind them. And then Girdler got a pass away. Fittler for McDougall. And McDougall is put down. Put down just outside the 20 on five. A good set of six for New South Wales. A gain of 70 metres on five tackles as John puts it in the air. Here come the jumpers. Sailor's got it beautifully. There's a little juggle, but he was under pressure. But he saved for Queensland. You won't see a better take than that one from Wendell Saylor. He had no chance of catching it. The ball was swirling. It was a spiral kick all over the place. He misjudged it in the end. It was back over his shoulder. Somehow he's gathered it in. That's just a great, great tip. Martin Lane. He takes some of his pressure away from Queensland. They're playing the game at the wrong end of the park, obviously. With a four-point deficit looking down on them. McKenna. And this is the last tackle for Queensland. They go looking for the boot, and it's Green that provides it. McDougall on the left wing, watching Robbie Ross as he brings it back. A 10-metre gain by Ross before he meets the opposition. And it's Stephen Price that puts him down. Girdler then from dummy half. His confidence buoyed by a freakish pass that he unloaded just a minute ago. And they approach the halfway line with Ben Kennedy this time. And Kennedy 
as Blocker pointed out, fresh in the legs. He plays the ball, and the Blues find Johns going across for Daly. Daly on for Hill. They try to get round him. Here's Geyer down the right, putting a kick into the centre. Sailor is there. He's all over the place, Wendell. He's been cleaning up all night for Queensland. Well, he's a great winger. Wayne Pearce looks on. His team in front only by four points, though. Wendell's always been a frustrated fullback for mine. He's, he can be devastating from the back there. Greenhill, Hetherington. Hetherington for Smith. Jason. Going back into the middle, getting a ball away. Hetherington was there waiting for it. Green is with it. And Green looks at Tallis in the centre. Darren Smith on his outside takes the tackle. Darren Smith then. Andrew Johns blocking up the centre. Gets a round of applause from Brad Fittler for his defensive work. And then Greenhill goes to the halfway line. And there's McKenna again getting almost into the obstruction zone. It's the last tackle for Walters now. And he puts a kick in down behind Matt Geyer. This time he's putting some speed on to get back there. And he passes across to Robbie Ross. And Ross, he has to contend with the defence and is put down about five metres out from his own line. Steve Roach on the sideline. Yeah, just talking about Wendell Saylor at fullback. That was a message from Wayne Pearce at half-time. Get down that end and put some pressure on Saylor. He could come up with an error. To be there, using Fittler. And Fittler lifting that left knee fairly high, 25 metres out from his own line. Tooby goes back to the centre. The pass looked a bit questionable. It is with Hound. As, uh, some changes take place in the New South Wales side. Carroll apparently is game in fact big spud is out there now that was the change they just made as the ball is played over there by brad fiddler and Tuvi goes back across for johns and then wide for daly daly puts a kick in they're doing a lot of passing they're not going forward very often though apart from off the boot and it's with Eichen. well it's been a little bit surprising for the first 67 minutes ray that the interchange bench hasn't been used that much from wayne pierce ben kennedy steve Roach spoke about i've been surprised mundine hasn't been out there longer but we might find that that's been a master stroke from Wayne Pearce in this last 15 minutes, where they might just have some fresh legs. Mark Murray doesn't have that at his disposal, especially with Rogers and possibly O'Davis out for the rest of the game. It's a good effort, a bullocking performance by Stephen Price as Queensland mountain attack. A little opportunity there for them. Paul Green caught well. Jason Smith holds it for brother Darren, and Darren is held about 15 metres away from the Blues line. Ben I can back in here. Now Jason Smith, Kevin Walters with him through the dummy. Knocked down off the hand of a New South Wales player. This might be a scrum. First one by New South Wales. Yes, I think you'll find Stephen Clark is right. Yes, and Nick Cossip got his hand in there. Jason Smith was trying a miracle pass. And Brian Fletcher, it is, sorry to Nick, but uh, Brian came in, knocked the ball down. Another bonus for the Queensland side is the, is the scoreline, 12-8. They only have to draw this match to win the series, really. So Queensland now winning the scrum. Ten metres out from the line. And it's with Kevin Walters proving evasive. Nice way to slow play the ball. And then Green works his blind side for Salem. The big man stands there, a two-man tackle, making sure the ball's not going anywhere. Hetherington sweeping it, Green giving it, Tallis turning it over, Greenhill with it, flops it back and Johns dives for it and gets it. Lamb on the sideline, as I said, he's, he's riding every inch of the way. Good work by Joey Johns to take the pressure valve off. This is 2v now for the Blues. A reminder of the cricket live from Lords at the end of the football. Australia, Zimbabwe, now Girdler. And of course, Origin 3 from Suncorp in a fortnight tonight. Cap been on and off four or five times tonight, at least three times with injury. But the big rabbito these days weathering the score. Carroll now. 25 metres out from the Queensland line. Both of them showing the effects of heavy conditions, trying conditions. It will take an enormous effort to get the ball down over the line from the wrong end of the park. That's not the case for New South Wales. They're on the right end of the field as Mundine is pulled down. The, the referee has said play the ball. Now it's gone from Daly. Ross is good. Over for Fittler. Fittler leaving the 40-metre line behind him. And Hill comes into acting hard. And Fletcher puts his hand up. Fletcher there to the 30. And held under the 
Down on the legs by Hedman. Greenhill up the top. Mundine away. John's on. Daly with it. Daly! Getting through the tackle, but it was enough to pull him down. Paul Green it was. Secured by Darren Smith. Girdler runs the blind side. Close to the sideline. And is tackled 11 metres out from the line. And the ball has been lost. Well, Ron Girdler. Maybe a selfish play by him. He saw a chance down the blind side. They had a, a huge line stretched out to the right. He took a chance down there. He's lost the football. Queensland, the pressure valve just released a little. Steve Roach, a report on Robbie O'Davis. He's got knee and ankle problems, but they are hopeful they'll get him back on the field. So we might see Robbie O'Davis again. Here's Big Wendell having a whale of a game. He's pulled down 25 metres out from his own line. It's a cross for Kevin Wilders. And a floating pass goes off the fingers of Carroll. And now it's gone forward. Advantage rule applies. New South Wales. They get an opportunity just inside the 30-metre line. Queensland's in. Daly trying to step around Greenhill. And he's held in the tackle by Stephen Price. They've just got to maintain the pressure here, New South Wales. Work through their set of six and either put the big bomb up or get it into the in-goal area. Got to play as much football down this end of the field as they can, and they are in great position to do so. Under eight minutes of the origin remaining as Johns pops it up for Fitler. Fitler gets a pass away. There's Robbie Ross again. Now Andrew Johns. Back to the right they go. Daly attacks the 10-metre line. Gets the ball away. And that's Terry Hill who's tackled five metres out from the line. Played back now for Mundine. Now Andrew Johns dummies and then takes the play himself. And Andrew will play it. The upright's about five metres in front of him. Fittler goes himself. Fittler throws a long pass. They've gone out to the right wing. Dyer, Dyer goes slithering across. But the ball apparently has gone forward. The ball oh. has gone forward, and the bench goes down again. That, well, you think, would have wrapped it up, but a good call from the touch judge there. He saw the ball float forward from Fittler. It goes out to Hill, this pass. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, good call. Oh, he got down guy, didn't he? Excellent call by the touch judge, a comment from Wally. And it's time now for the Queensland back line from this scrum. They know that they've got to make every option available to them. They've got to try and stretch the back line out, give the New South Wales backs around about 10 or 15 metres between each player. Get the one-on-one -on -one play going, perhaps an inside pass. Well, there's only one bloke in their side can run the length of the field at the moment. That's the man with the ball now, Wendell Saylor. Greenhill, meantime, another visit to the blood group. 15 away from their own line, Queensland, and trailing by four. But if you've been watching Origin often, and many of you have, uh, then we've seen them get out of jail many, many times. Singh and Carroll combining. Carroll, in fact, scored a try on debut to win a match for Queensland in the uh, very recent past. Now it's Lang, and he'll play the ball 38 metres out from his own line. Off to the right for Walters. They go wide, but it's over the head of Green, and it takes some momentum away from Queensland. Jason Smith trying to counter punch off a sloppy piece of play. He will play it inside the 30 metre line, centre of the ground on five. They need a big kick out of this, and Green does that. McDougall watches Robbie Ross bring it back from the 20 metre line. They're playing, incidentally, in front of a new origin record crowd. 88,000 odd people here setting a new record tonight. 88,336, which is just over a thousand more than the crowd at the MCG. Now it's with Green. Dyer taken down and losing the ball. Losing the ball, and a penalty has come from a two-man tackle. Well, Paul Green will dispute that he stole the ball. Yeah, he's claiming, I think, that that guy loses it. The temptation, it's there, isn't it? Look at the, the ball sitting up. And yeah. I think he's got just cause to... No way. No, he didn't steal it. He simply went on to complete a legitimate tackle. He's putting the man on the ground. Exactly right. From the angle we had on it, there didn't seem to be any infringement from Paul Green whatsoever. This is Michael Vella. 40 metres out from the line. The New South Wales Blues getting so much closer to surviving in the Harvey Norman series for 1999. As Toofy gets a short ball for Ben Kennedy. And security, that is the name of the game. Not only survival, as Toofy runs an angle. Fiddler! Fiddler comes back on the inside to be held. Put down again by Sailor, forever waiting with Webke. 
And now Tuvi for Johns and then Daly and Daly away from Walters. It's with Robbie Ross and Ross can unload but opts not to. And that's five tackles gone for the Blues. Daly, a grubber kick, came off a Queenslander. It's with Green. The ball went backwards. He goes straight to the winger and picks up Ben Eichen. Eichen's gone into touch. So New South Wales will get a wonderful chance now. Yeah, we've got a problem in the in the tackle, I think. Is it McDougal? He's hurt himself in taking Benny Eichen over the sideline. Yeah, strong tackle from McDougal. Benny gave him the opportunity. The boys go up. They like that one. Carroll, he's worked very hard tonight, Mark Carroll. Not going to step on a jump there from him. And now another problem. Another of the star players on show tonight. These slippery conditions. And Adam McDougall is the latest casualty. Robbie O'Davis, uh, Matt Rogers. And we've had players off left, right and centre. You've got to say something about this, this Queensland side, though. New South Wales still haven't put them away. They've had plenty of stars. They've shown plenty of guts and courage. The, the boys are playing on. Referee Stephen uh, Clark is still on the sideline. Yeah, Clark pointing out to the Blues that we have an injured player still on the ground, and he had called timeout for trainers to attend to him. And another blood bin as well with Stephen Price off and Chris McKenna coming back on. So here's a chance for the Blues to put it away. Three minutes from the siren. Daly goes himself. He's already got one on the board. He will play the ball this time. Ten metres away from the line. To the right they go. Down the blind. It is with Fletcher. Beats one, takes on another. Looks to unload. Tuvi wants it. It's with Tuvi. It went backwards. The little manly number nine comes away. Now it's with Fittler. And Fittler looks to unload. Takes it to ground. Two metres out from the line for the Blues. Play back for Kosev, who has to dive on that loose ball. So they really haven't organised themselves that well on this set of six New South Wales. Here's Daly wrestling with the Queensland defence. Three of them involved there. And uh, Clark waving the Queenslanders back behind their own line. Carroll takes it up now, and he will play it on five. Just get it into the in-goal area and get another set of six. And that would be the ball game for mine. They've got to get it in there. So Johns, he goes to the air, they're underneath it, both sides, the bounce is there, a dive by Hill. He claims a try, but the touch judge said no. It went over the sideline, it came off Queensland apparently, and he's taking them back for a line dropout. Yes, it came off Tony Carroll, he tried to bat it over the dead ball line, and Terry Hill only inches away from capitalising. But if New South Wales play smart, and they've got the players out there, to get them to do that, we will have a decider. The facial expression of Terry Hill, he applied there for a try, it was denied, and then the referee through the touch judge said, it's a line dropout, and Hill immediately became contented with the judgment as Hill, as Carroll plays the ball now, some 30 metres away from the Queensland line, the ball loose again, and it's with Fittler. Fittler picking up a loose ball, offloading now for Andrew Johns, and he will play it back for Tuvi, with just over two minutes of the origin remaining, it's Fletcher, an offload for Ross, and Ross is taken by Jason Smith to go. To run for himself, and then away for Fitton, and then a torpedo pass finds Hill, but Matt Singh is there to make the tackle. Ever solid down that right side. Fitler now. Fitler lurking, probing. Robbie Ross into the act. Then Daly. Daly has been fabulous for New South Wales. He'll play it on tackle five. That's where they're at, just outside the 10-metre line. It's with Andrew Johns, and they play the same way again. Over into that corner where Carroll is. The bounce of the ball comes down to Queensland. So the Queenslanders are 95 metres from the uh, New South Wales line. They are with just over a minute to go. Well, they've done it before Queensland. They've snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. They did it last year at the SFS with 40 seconds to go. Can they do it again? Now Jason Smith wants the football to run it. Gordon Tallis gets involved and goes through almost. Great cover tackle there from the number eight, Mark Carroll. Watch for the kick again before the last. So here's Jason Smith now turning it back into the traffic zone. And it is Paul Green who's pulled down. Can Queensland pull off another miracle? It's been done before, but oh, the ball has been lost. And 
that loses the game almost certainly for the Queenslanders. The series has been squared. One would be confident in saying that the New South Wales players on the bench congratulating one another and the referee ruling that that ball was lost cold by Paul Green sees well, the scrum to go down with the loose head and feed to the Blues. Who was to say what might have happened with Queens in a possession a couple of tackles to go with 30 seconds remaining. What a way to lose a game. Paul, it might be the cynical side coming out in myself and it's no reflection on Paul Green. But I wonder whether he's dropped one, maybe hoping for a penalty and getting the football another 30 or 40 metres down with a couple of with six tackles left. So I think the siren has sounded. Yes, the jubilation is there. It's high fives all round. And a very relieved New South Wales coach, Wayne Pearce. The Blues are home in a scoreless second half. The series has been levelled and will go now to Suncorp Stadium in a fortnight. One of the wounded, Matt Rogers, Robbie O'Davis was another, and Adam McDougall another. A, a rather dejected Queensland coach. He, together with his 17, came here hoping to wrap up the series of 1999. New South Wales 12 then have defeated Queensland 8 with two tries to the Blues. Robbie Ross the first at a, a miraculous 42nd second of the game. Laurie Daly at the 34th minute, Matt Rogers at the 26th minute, and there were no other tries scored, or points scored in fact, in the second half.